Sorry, we're closed. Come back tomorrow or make an appointment online. Yes, uh, what do you want? The Shores. Oh, you mean that girl who got killed? What was her name? D Dorothy? I see a lot of faces in my studio, but I'm not good with names. Wait. Dorota? Dorota? I remember now. For the August Chronicle. Uh, she won some sort of award. I remember her cello. It kept reflecting the flash and ruining the shop. No, I went to her house, along with the reporter. It's better with these human interest stories to capture them in a natural habitat. If you ask me to drive there without my sat-nav, no. No, actually, I've been running a special offer on portraits since she came in for a studio session. Wait there. As you can see, there's photos here. They're on the cello. Yeah. Now this one's in colour. Beautiful hair. Oh, legs wrapped around. <laughs> Another one here. Oh, hang on. Do you see what I see? Nothing. She's just a very attractive girl. That's all. Friends, yes, I know Violet very well. Violet takes it very well, actually. I like him like that. With a frosty exterior comes a soft, warm center. I'm sorry my analogy wasn't explicit enough for you. Yes, we have sex. What do you mean? Violet needs to mind her own business. I didn't want to mention them out of respect for the dead. You've heard of boudoir photography. Dorota saw my boudoir set and asked me to take some shots. It's all very tasteful. A lot of women have them done as gifts for their husbands or boyfriends or girlfriends, I suppose. She didn't say. Her boyfriend, I assume. Here. I'm usually here most nights. Only the roof rats. If you have anything else on Zach Weston, let me know. That's what he says, but no one can back him up. He's on my radar now. I, I think you're supposed to tell me that. If he was taking photos of Dorota, maybe he fell for her? And the feeling wasn't mutual. Artists have muses, apparently. Wish I had one. And I'm all for a good boudoir picture, but who are they for? There's definitely a strong connection between those two, then. Perhaps go and ask him about it? Zach Weston says he was in his studio last night. Zach says he's sleeping with Violet, which I doubt. Zach did other photo sessions with Dorota. Boudoir. I wonder what else he's not telling us. Rain still says he was praying in his room, alone. Bronwyn and Lexi lied about being together last night. They're still following up Birmingham. Keep me posted. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned the word traveller to me, but he's nothing. Oscar's in the clear. He was playing football last night. He said that Dorota had a wedding dress in her closet. Not many people would know that. 
That's it. Uh, do we really have to? How vulgar, yes. I suppose that is what he'd say. But I've never let him lay a finger on me. He says we're in a relationship, but he doesn't act like it. He thinks he's irresistible to women. No. <laughs> Sam, look, I, I can't talk right now. I'm doing phone readings. I've got to pay for a job somehow. Lexi's locked in till late too. I, I can sort you out afterwards, yeah? Fine, Sam. Birmingham. Mercury took us to Birmingham. We didn't know what for. We never really know what for. But we turned up. It started with a girl, Ginny. She was South African. I only mention it because that was its thing. Yeah. We didn't know at the time, but in hindsight, it was after South African girls. Three, to be exact. The Traveller wanted three. You should ask Bronwyn. She's the one that knows about rights. I just know it normally involves three, and all three share a common attribute. I guess you might call them demons, in as much as they can get inside us. They come from other worlds. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Quantum physics is real, didn't you know? <laughs> um, there are many universes. In technical terms, a traveller is a trans-dimensional being far more superior to us, in as much as they can choose which reality to hang out in. We just get this one. Yes, disturbingly. It's actually a lot more complicated than that. Um, they choose a reality slash universe where they actually evolve to become the person they're possessing. So they jump in a few million years before our timelines intersect. They can't just jump into someone. It takes a few hours for that. They make the decision before they travel, which is why we can catch them. Yes, probably. The tarot doesn't just sat-nav us to normal murders. I met him yesterday, doing the rounds, looking for reading work. Actually, he... Oh, no. Um, he did mention the rotor. He said there was this girl he was planning to meet up with. Said she was alone every Monday night because her parents go to the cinema. Do you know what that means? It was the road to shore. I'm Zach Weston. Just sharpening my powers of persuasion. Zack, what are you doing here? Oh, quick, don't let anyone see you. Why don't you want anyone to see me? Everyone's talking about Dorota. Are you happy Dorota's dead? Everyone's talking about Dorota. Why don't you want anyone to see me? 
I know. But I suppose people like that attract trouble. People like what? Is that why you killed her? That's not funny, Zack. What if Sam heard? Why don't you want anyone to see me? Are you happy, Dorota? I didn't say that. But we both know what Dorota was like. She practically threw herself at you. She didn't throw herself at me. Why do you think that? She didn't throw herself. Don't play games with me, Zack. You know how insecure I get. Why don't you want anyone to see me? What? You're the one who said we shouldn't be seen together. What are you doing here? I wanted to make sure... What did you do? What did you say to Sam? Zack, let me stop you there. Um, you are one creepy fellow. Now, I, I don't know what you had going on with Dorota, but I don't want anything to do with it. Do not come back here, please. It's 8 o'clock and time for another August update. Police investigating the death of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw have said there's no evidence to connect her boyfriend to the murder. Chief DuPont's statement was delivered in response to speculation from local residents that it was a crime of passion. Miss Shaw's strangled body was found by her mother around 10 p.m. last night in what the chief is calling a puzzling crime. I can't believe people are gossiping already, Poe. It's always the person closest to the victim, isn't that what they say? But that poor boy. A reminder also that due to the murder, this weekend's tulip festival has been postponed. New dates will be announced soon. The weather's getting worse tonight with heavy rain forecast. So if you're heading out, you might want to take a jacket. Or a cap. Or wear the jacket in the cab. That's 8 o'clock with Poe and Monroe. got news. <sighs> We've done a reading. The Five of Swords? That's the same card as yesterday. Let's hope it's not the Knight of Wands. This doesn't look good. It's fine. This happens all the time. There are 78 cards in a deck. The same ones come up a lot. I get it. But we drew the exact same cards yesterday. What are the odds of putting all three again? One in 474,552. I know. I get asked a lot. Bet it's a ten of swords. happening again. There's going to be another murder. Then Lexi did her thing, and now we have a name. Ellis Munro. You must be Sam.
He just got off the phone with Chief DuPont. I can't believe it. Chris Dorota? Now me. Not very well. He's done a few shoots of me and Poe. To promote the show. No. Zach keeps asking, but I just don't want to. Not for him, but Dorota did. She gave me the pictures as a gift. She looked amazing. We're co-hosts on the radio. Oh, sorry. You know that already. Um, we've been partners for two years now. He's a good friend. Can't we be both, Sam? Poe's his radio name. He's actually John Poe. He's on air now, but you can come back at 8.30 if you want to see him. On air? We both were. We broadcast live hourly news reports. It's how we keep our funding. Yes. We were... friends. I hadn't known her for long. Only a few weeks. We met at the gala. I was hosting and she was playing the cello, you know? I guess we talked for a little while and then she asked me for a drink after the show. After we'd had a few drinks, she invited me back to her house. I thought we were just gonna chat, watch a movie, that sort of thing. Then she kissed me. I was so shocked. She was so attractive. So... I kissed her back. Oscar. Yeah. She was a bit confused. When we started seeing each other, she didn't... She didn't like him touching her anymore. I didn't mind. But she did. So I told her if he wanted to get sexual, then maybe she should try something else. I said some guys like to watch, so tell him it would be sexy if he could look but he couldn't touch. As far as I know, it worked. The killer was in her wardrobe? What? Well then it had to be Oscar. He's the only one it could be. That doesn't make any sense. Then, she was seeing someone else? No. Someone she knew. Knew she'd be alone? A stalker? It was her mom's. She was saving any case she ever got married. This is just between us, right? We fooled around. I don't have many friends, Sam. Everyone thinks because I'm on the radio, I have tons of friends, so nobody ever approaches me. I get lonely. But Dorota was my friend, and I liked making her happy. I'm not going into detail, Sam. We pledged each other multiple times. No. Sorry. I did have a strange dream last night, though. My life was playing on a TV screen, and every time I did something, another version of me started playing over the first. In the end, there were so many versions, it became a fog. It filled my lungs. I couldn't breathe. And then I woke up. What do you think that means, Sam? I don't know what. I mean, I'm anxious now. Maybe, maybe it was predicting Dorota's death. Or mine. Just don't hurt me. Or let me get hurt.
Sam? We forgot your phone. Everyone knows her. She's a local radio star here. I always get the shot, Sam. One way or another. <sighs> Sam, do me a favor. Go easy on Violet. If we need to get anything out of her, let me deal with it. She'll open up to me. We've got a new target. Ellis Monroe. Ellis said she was in a relationship with Dorota. She kissed a girl and she all liked it. She told you where John Pope, or Poe, is going to be next. Rain still says he was praying in his room, alone. Bronwyn and Lexi lied about being together last night. Violet says she doesn't remember last night, but I've got that in hand. Zach Weston says he was in his studio last night. No one corroborates. And he keeps asking Ellis to pose nude. Could be motive. Oscar's in the clear. He was playing football last night. He said that Dorota had a wedding dress in her closet. Not many people would know that. That's it. Work. Gold star for you. <laughs> oh, hello. This is my goddaughter, Sophia. She's only nine and she's a maths genius. Hello. <laughs> I have to pop to my room to get something. Be nice to her while I'm gone. Otherwise, I might have to smother you in your sleep. What's your name? I'm Sophia. Pleased to meet you. You want to know a secret? Violet was taken by aliens in their ship. She doesn't want anyone to know. Sorry about that. Sophia, your mother will be here for you soon, so run along and wait. <laughs> now, Sam, how can I help you? Of course. Poe and Monroe. She's on the radio. <laughs> she has a wicked imagination for her age. <sighs> Do you think you're sitting here now? Perception is reality, Sam. I needed to confide in someone, so I told Chief Dupont, just Chief Dupont. And now you, apparently. Why are you talking about this again? You understand, every time you mention abduction, it opens up a vault of crushing memories that I'd rather stay locked up. No. Not even the moon. I don't really want to. About a month ago, the guest house was empty and I was alone in my bedroom. All I could hear was dripping. Cold tap. Drip. 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 And then it began. I could smell iron. A strong, metallic smell. Then I could taste it. On my tongue. And then weightlessness, like time and space had stopped. That was the first time they took me. It's happened five times, even on Clozapine. Get that strange aura, then I'm gone. I tests for epilepsy, amongst other things. 
sure the scans were normal. No. I have certain flashbacks. It's difficult to explain. I'm stuck in the wall of an enormous room made from these wooden vines, except the vines slowly move and drip with pain. My head is pushed out like I'm a trophy. If I look to my side, there are others, heads, all prisoners being experimented on. They rearrange us like decorations, suck us backwards into the darkness and then thrust us back through the wall. And when they return me home, I've been broken. Cuts. Bruises. Memories. A little bit. What did you want to know? A right can take many forms, but from what we know about these travellers, it seems to be performing some kind of coming-of-age ceremony. Yes, a rite of passage. A running havoc in our dimension is rewarded in theirs. Not fair, is it? Three is a powerful number. There's a divine balance to it in our universe anyway. But maybe it doesn't mean anything where the traveler's from. Maybe three is just the carry-on limit for interdimensional travel. Was it a gold coin? Hmm. That's more of a serial killer thing than a possessed by a traveler thing. It's a bit showy, but well, there's no guarantees. No. I can do a reading if you want. Chariot. Is Zack a suspect? I'm sensing there's a lot of tension, pent up frustration, like he's trying to keep everything together and if he can just do that. I'm sorry, that's not much help to you, is it? I've heard on the radio, but other than that, I don't know anything about her. I want to help though. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Although we can be sure of one thing. Yeah, she sounded blonde on the radio, but Mercury called her as a redhead. Yes, of course, anything. I've already been doing that, but sure, I'll keep at it. Maybe it'll feel sorry for me and finally put out. In Birmingham, it was a man called Yuri Harris. He worked as a butcher. He beheaded all three girls within hours of each other. And we couldn't stop it. He pleaded not guilty for reason of temporary insanity. The Butcher of Birmingham received three life sentences and won't be seeing the light of day anytime soon. We know it wasn't him, though. We know it was a traveller. Yes, I met her at the radio station. I was offering my services. Earning a living's tricky when you travel around as much as we do. And last time I checked, Violet wasn't offering us room and board for free. So what's the news about Ellis? 
I feel so useless sitting here. I want to help. Yes, please use me. Tell me what to do. You got it. Me and the spirit world are going to have a serious chat. I'll get back to you when I find something. You're only alive because we want you to be. Hi, I... <clears throat> Hi. Hi, I'm Chief DuPont. Claude. Hi, I'm Ellis. I'm Ellis. Hello, I'm Violet. I'm Violet. Hello, lovely. Take a look at this. It's a picture of the rotor. I don't want to see pictures of your conquests. It's not like that. It's just a press photo. Do you see anything in it? A girl holding a cello. You don't see any movement. Just a rotor. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. I'm Bronwyn. Do you believe Tara can predict things now? I'm not one for mystics in crystal balls. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> it says you're lying about your alibi. Is it really? 
can it predict the murderer? No. Of course not, you'd have done that already. What a day. Ellis Munro, then. Looks like our traveller likes redheads. I wouldn't be so sure. Look. Should we be worried about Violet? Maybe. She thinks she was abducted by an alien. Then that possibly means she's already been a traveller target. What else did she say? Something about being in a row of heads. So they're killing us for sport. Sounds about right. Ron, what are we going to do about Ellis? What would you do about Ellis? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Let's think. What have we tried before? A few times we've caught up with the Traveller. Nothing's worked. Talking to them? Killing them? Restraining them? If we lock up the killer until Mercury tells us Ellis is safe, that could work. But who is the killer? Ellis. Zack. Violet. Oscar. Sam. Chief Dupont. Rain. Chief Dupont. Sam. O Zach. Violet. Zach. I think so too. I need a reason to visit him though. Hi, I'm Lexi. Oh, um, <clears throat> I'm Lexi. Sorry, we're closed. Unless you're here for something else. I'm a friend of Dorota's. Dorota? I'm sorry about what happened. Dorota told me things about you. Things? That's ominously vague. I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Le Lexi. I like it. It's got an edge. Dorota says she knew you. You're dating Violet, aren't you? I know what you did to Dorota. I didn't do anything to Dorota. You killed her. You seduced her. You make it sound so sordid. Dorota didn't do anything she didn't want to. Dorota says she knew you. You're dating Violet, aren't you? No, we're just friends. That's not what you told Sam. That's not what Violet thinks. Violet doesn't always see things clearly. It's fine. I know how to handle her. Doesn't see what clearly? What do you mean, handle her? You know, some women, they think a bunch of flowers means a relationship. Anyway, <laughs> why are we talking about Violet? Let's talk about you. Dorota says she knew you. Yeah, she had a portrait session with me. Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. I've only got vodka. You're old enough to drink, right? Of course. Just checking. Have you ever thought about dyeing your hair red? I think it would suit you.
Lexicorn, how thin are these walls? What do you mean the walls are thin? I can hear you screaming at your Ouija board last night too. I feel like I've heard your whole life story. What does Sam like me? Is Violet a lesbian? Will Ellis die? Will Bromwyn die? That last one, don't worry about that. Why not? Because Ach I. I am Bronwyn MacLeod from the Clan MacLeod and I am immortal, you silly badger. Our job is so stressful. Tell me about it. Chasing around the unknown, trying to triumph good over evil, Generally standing around helpless watching people die. Why do we do it? Why don't we just quit? Why? For me? It's a common decency thing. Hi, I'm Bronwyn. Did you know the Earth was overrun by transdimensional evil? Want to help fix it? <laughs> sure. Transdimensional evil? I'll read the manual, Lex. People are afraid of ghosts, zombies and aliens. They never even think to consider the possibility that there are millions of universes, potentially with millions of predators, all far more evolved than we are. What are our chances of victory? Minuscule. But if we don't fight at all, zero. It's nine o'clock and you're listening to Radio August. Investigations into the murder of 21-year-old Dorota Shaw are continuing this evening. Miss Shaw was found dead in her home at approximately 10 p.m. last night in what police are describing as a puzzling case. Residents are urged to be cautious until the perpetrator is caught. I cannot stress this enough, August. Stay safe out there. You mean the world to me. In other news, Monroe has been detained on urgent business, so you're stuck with me until she returns. Never fear, Monroe fans. We still have lots of pre-recordings, so you can relax with her angelic tones. That's nine o'clock with Poe and Monroe. You're the detective. Monroe just called. This is madness. Who would want to hurt her? You know, this town is fascinating. There's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Have you ever read up on the real history of August? The official story is that Mary August retired from a life on the high seas, found a nice spot here, and used her ill-gotten gains to establish a town. But that's not what really happened. It's true that Mary August was a pirate, but she didn't retire. Her ship was sunk on the rocks just off the coast. Mary and all of her crew sought refuge in a small fishing town, this one. They slaughtered everyone, men, women, and children, all dead and dismembered in their own homes. The bodies were dumped in a mass grave, well, the body parts, and the pirates moved in. Yes. 
August was built on the blood of innocence. Kind of puts Dorota's murder into perspective, doesn't it? We've worked together for years. She's the light to my shade, the angel to my demon, the diamond to my lump of coal. She told me to say all those things. Heavens no, I have a wife and three children, beloved spawn of my loins. Monroe and I are good friends, that's all. Only a madman, or woman. Monroe is August's sweetheart. Ho and Monroe, that was her idea. Our show. We were just another local radio station before that. It was Monroe who decided we should have a theme. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Don't tell me you haven't heard it, Detective. That's what the Free Radio Project is all about. Uniting August via the airwaves. Monroe's been delivering free radios anywhere people might want to listen. Doctor surgeries, hairdressers, the guest house. That's cynical, Detective. Not at all. We aren't the only show on the radio. We interviewed her about her scholarship not too long ago. Do you think whoever killed Dorota plans to kill Monroe? What makes you think she's in danger? Harrow? Does this have anything to do with the gentleman who stopped by? I didn't get his name, I'm afraid. He offered to do a spot on our show, doing tarot readings to answer listener questions. We said we'd think about it. On that note, I should probably get back to the booth. The show must go on. Death threats be damned. Look after Monroe, detective. She's the only Monroe I've got. I delivered radios all over town. I don't think I should have bothered with some of them, though. I don't think... Violet, is it? I don't think Violet liked me very much. Maybe. I don't know why anyone would be threatened by me, though. I'm not interested in stealing anyone's man. Hey, I'm going. There's too many people asking questions. It's exhausting. I'm off to stay at my aunt's. I'll come back tomorrow, but I've said everything I can say. Probably right here. Why? I didn't realize I was under house arrest. Thanks for the advice. I hope I'm not the only suspect. Yo, oh, it's you. I was hoping it might be Zach. No? Oh! Him, yes. I've heard him on the radio. Never met him in real life, though. Are you mocking me, Sam? No, I have never met the man. No. And I've got some very important news for him, if he ever shows up. Yes. If he ever shows up. Yes, now I remember. It's the one in the hall. Sometimes cuts through the uh, unbearable silence in this place. I'd remember her voice, but her face. That's very plain, isn't it? Thank <laughs> you.
Don't confirm the existence of travelers. They're not ready. I'm Zach Weston. Just sharpening my powers of persuasion.